If you want to do a measurement, the first uh, detection figure of merit that you look at is how reproducible the measurement is. Okay, and so these are a series of injections, norepinephrine at 100 micromolar, the carrier solution is a phosphate buffer at 7, and we're detecting at 550 millivolts. So, whoops, we're detecting at 550 millivolts, which is out here on the plateau of the mass transport limited region of the curves. You can see the reproducibility for both of them is very, very good. So over 30 injections, a variability of about 1.5%, about 1.2% here. So re high reproducibility is very characteristic of both diamond and, and glassy carbon, or diamond and tag. Glassy carbon is more 5 to 10% variability uh, in these kinds of experiments. You can look at how the concentration changes as a function of the injection. Uh, the signal changes as a function of the, inje uh, the ejected concentration. So this is a log current versus log concentration plot. So we've got linearity over four orders of magnitude, which is quite good, good correlation coefficient. Our detection limit, you can see, starts to roll off as we get to 10 nanomolar level here. So our detection limits, depending upon the electrode, are between 10 and 100 nanomolar. Reproducibilities, you can see for both electrodes, the TAC and the diamond are very, very good, about 1%. Dynamic range is typically the same for both of them. And the slope of the response curve, sensitivity, is the same for both of them. So diamond and TAC behave almost identically in these kinds of electroanalytical applications. And we already know that the diamond materials function very well for this purpose. So these TAC materials look like they have some very, very good capability for analytical uh, applications. The final uh, piece of data I'll show you is the stability. It's another characteristic of diamond, tends to be quite stable. So these are, again, hydrodynamic voltammograms for norepinephrine. And these, uh, a new electrode is the black. After one day exposing to the lab air and then repeating the measurement, and then after one week exposing to the laboratory air and repeating the measurement, you can see there's a slight increase in the half wave potential, but virtually little. So this material is very, very resistant to deactivation upon air exposure. So very, very good stability. And you can see that the, the stability is shown over here in terms of the limiting current that we measure over the course of those days. And so this was actually you know, over the course of one week in October, about a year ago. So virtually the same value. The error bars are shown, but they're so small that they're within the uh, marker, so you can't see them. So virtually the same, about 1.2 microamps you know, and doesn't change over time. So this is a very, very good property of the material. So I hope to, I have shown you a couple of things about these TAC materials. Number one, oh, number one, that they can be deposited and they adhere well to substrates. They can be incorporated, have nitrogen incorporated, which affects their electrical properties. It makes them more conducting. The materials consist of a, a mixed microstructure, some sp2 bonded carbon and some sp3 bonded carbon. Some of the sp2 bonded carbon is in a ring structure, pyrrole and pyridine-like uh, functional groups. The ratio uh, or the amount of the sp2 carbon changes with the nitrogen content. It increases. These TAC electrodes possess some very good electrochemical properties that are very, very similar to diamond. And analytically, they give us some very good detection figures of merit. So I showed you one example. We probably have, Bruna did some work, but we have four or five examples now of molecules that require very positive potentials to detect excellent detection figures of merit with these TAC materials. So uh, again, I want to thank the Army Research Office uh, that supports part of this work and then uh, copies for my, uh, the good fortune of being able to come here and, and work with the people. This doesn't have the whole group, but this girl right here, Omana, did most of the electrochemistry that I showed you today. That girl, I think, is in the audience there. She actually did some work, uh, Paula, when she was in the laboratory, but I didn't present that to you today, looking at electrolyte effects on the TAC electrodes. Uh, the flow injection work was done by Denisha here, and Joy, a high school student, helped out with that. And, uh, well, that would be it. So I thank you for your attention and be happy to answer any questions you might have. Please. Uh, from the technical side of the presentation, uh, is it possible to control the amount of SP3 and FP2 carbon in the field? Mm -hmm. Yes, we can control that by the deposition conditions. So, have we investigated in the field the ideal amount of SP3 and FP2 in the response? Yeah. Not completely yet, but we have some data 
that suggests that the, 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 the amount of nitrogen with the 10 SCCM flow is very good for most of them. That's what I showed you today. So, no, I have a student that's doing a very systematic study of that now. We have not done a complete study, but some data uh, indicate that that 10 SCCM level, about 8 atomic percent of nitrogen, a mixture of about 50-50 sp2 to sp3 is good for what we want to do. Depends, if you, if you need a very hard material and you're not interested in electrochemistry, you need low sp2. Uh, the materials that we've worked with that have no nitrogen, very little sp2, their conductivity is not so high. I showed you the 5,000 ohm center. The sp2 domains are too far apart, so you have very poor electrical pathways through the material. So we have to add some nitrogen to get more of the sp2 domains closer together, and now we have conductive pathways. 50-50 is a good, good mix, but we need some more study with that. Yeah, well, you can imagine in the sp3, it's a very diamond-like structure. So carbon, tetrahedrally bonded, and so I've got domains of diamond. They are going to be connected to other domains of diamond by sp2 carbon. Could be a linear chain, or could be a, a parole-like linkage, or a pyridine-like linkage, or two or three of those ring systems fusing together to give a larger ring structure that connects. So uh, all we know now is that we have some functionality, some nitrogen in a chemical environment like a pyridine, in a chemical environment like a parole molecule, but uh, we don't have any more information about that. And, uh, people have studied this in the literature, uh, so it's not for electrochemistry, but just for the electrical properties. So some of this information is known, but in our films, we don't have complete knowledge of that yet. That's a very good question. There's, uh, there's some spectroscopy I think we can do. Raman, we might be able to use more yeah. to... How is the nitrogen of the molecule is, how is it like inside the... I was trying to think about this. Yeah, well, like I said, the diamond domain, a diamond domain, and they have to be connected by some sp2 bonded carbon. And depending upon how much sp2 you have, you can have kind of a linear chain with a primary amine in there, or I can start to form ring structures, pyrrole, pyridine units. And so uh, the data we have suggests that there may be uh, quite a bit of ring structure formation, five-membered ring, uh, six-membered ring, with nitrogen as part of the ring, a heterocycle. Other questions? Let me say 8% and 12% or SP3. Then the, the potential window should be might decrease, no? And the. It will. And the electron transfer decreases too, maybe. The electron transfer. Uh, for in some cases, we have more SP2 than SP3. Or we want the electron transfer. Yeah, yeah. So lower. Lower than if you have more SP3. SP3. That's, that's what it will do, yes. That's no question. We, that, I didn't show those data, but that's the trend, yes. Yeah, the rate constant is not necessarily dependent on that. Ruthenium, for example, independent of how much nitrogen we have or how much SP2. Ferrocyanide does depend on it. Ruthenium works like an offset here. By the window, by the window, you can see it. Yeah. yeah. If we put enough nitrogen, it becomes less carbon. Yeah. yeah. Which, uh, we're same not, we're not as well. Same thing. Right? Yeah. 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 No, we are just moving with one flow rate, one, one mil per minute usually. Uh, I don't think we would be going to get the flow rate back. She stopped it, did it work with the stop flow? No, continuous flow. To, to look at what's going on with the, the, the electrode. 
stop the septic zone in the electronic cell, in the electric cell, and make a sacrifice to try to understand what's going on there. No, no, she didn't do that. I guess not a bad idea. No, she didn't do it. Yeah. So the other thing, you show that the stability is quite good. It does change a little bit. Did you ever treat it? Did you see it? Did you ever treat it? I have a body or your body would just to see whether you could, for instance, get back the same... Uh, Half wave? Yeah, no, we didn't do anything like that. Uh, no, nothing. Nothing, yeah. So no pretreatment ahead of time and nothing after. That's usually what we do. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> this is a pretreatment group. <laughs> usually the only thing that we do is a soak and very, very clean isopropanol that we've very meticulously cleaned up. And that usually is very good at desorbing and dissolving contaminants. Uh, but to try any of those, I, no, I worry about that because they're thin and uh, two, three, four hundred nanometers thick. So some of these harsh pretreatments that you guys look at might, the film might be gone. I don't know, maybe. That's the other question I was going to make. Probably this film, you already highlighted that very good for our analysis. Um, you don't, of course, seem that they could be used in black regulation studies. Well, it should be tried. We've done, we've done some experiments where we expose them to very harsh conditions, not electrochemistry, but chemical oxidants. And the film is very, very stable. They don't come off. If you take a very high SP2 carbon film, it's gone. But the films that we did the electrochemistry on, they have enough diamond character, SP3, that the films are very stable. So I think it would be worth trying. I have no idea how stable it would be. Yeah, yeah, because we can put them on steel or virtually any metal. You have to keep them thin because they're stressed. The film has some intrinsic stress, and so if it gets too thick, then pops off. So we, uh, three or four hundred nanometers is about as thick as you can go. Yeah, that's just one more question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it possible to know the ratio of SP2, SP3, is also the nitrogen ratio? Sure. By, we can get the ratio of SP2 to SP3 by electron energy loss spectroscopy in the TEM. And, the, and we can also get it by XPS. We can get the nitrogen levels by. Uh, well, we usually do depth profiling with the OJ electron spectroscopy. So we measure the signal for the nitrogen as a function of sputtering depth through there. So those three techniques are XPS, depth profiling, and, and uh, electron energy loss spectroscopy are very, very good tools to use. So there are other ways of making similar types of films. Yes. Uh, plasma-based systems, uh, DC arc systems. So the, yes, there are several ways uh, that one can make a diamond-like carbon film. This way is a, is a method that's, that's very, very large reactors, this whole side of the room. So many, many parts can be put in the reactor at one time and coat them quickly. So uh, it's very, very well established for this kind of carbon commercially. So very, very large scale use of the coating system, yeah, yeah. So you can make very large electrodes if you want to. You could make large electrodes or you could put many, many drill bits into the system at one time and coat them or parts, windows and things like this. We have some people working on uh, coatings for the windows of the, uh, what do you say, omnibus, the bus. So this very large piece has to go in and have a tack coating on the surface. So reactor technology can be scaled up to be quite large. Thank you.